Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy, Kingdom Soldier, and I'm back again with another commentary. First of all, to those of you, a lot of people have been saying, you need to get Astros, you need to get Astros. One of the things that you guys have to realize is that I don't really record with these. I just wear them because I want to look like a commentator. I want to look official. I want to look like Puckett, you know, when he's sitting at the desk. <laughs> No, but in reality, it makes for a better video. It's just all about appearances, you know, like that picture right there. That doesn't sit there. I put that picture there before every video. I mean, you guys just, you know, you haven't been around. I understand. <laughs> oh, man, I love talking to you guys. So basically today, I just want to handle this topic. I want to knock it out real quick. And the question that I got from Twitter from someone, actually, and I, I, it was interesting. I want to talk about it is... Is Call of Duty a real sport? And will it ever be as big? Will it ever be as big as like a real sport, like a basketball or a baseball? Or a, uh, no. I'll say that out front. No. However, it is possible that Call of Duty will be very large. But it's not probable unless we continue in the direction that we're going. And that's going to require Sledgehammer. I'm talking to you, Sledgehammer Games. That's going to require you to hit a home run. You know, Black Ops 2 took us so far in advance. And it wasn't just putting in the support that professional players needed and putting in the shoutcast mode. And it was also league play and streaks that you could use in competitive and you could use online. And so even when I play pubs, I only use streaks that I would use in league play when I'm on Black Ops 2. You know, I use the Hellstorm, and I use the Lightning Strike, and I use the War Machine, because that's the kind of stuff that I can use when I'm playing competitively. And I only use weapons that I can use competitively. And so I think that one of the greatest things Black Ops 2 did, and I said this at the beginning when everybody was like, oh, kill streaks are going to kill the game, it's going to be... The reality is we have to show the people a game that they play. And because people are not competitive players yet, in order for them to see competitive Call of Duty as something they're actually going to watch, they have to see strategies that they can take from watching Nadeshot and from watching Scumpy and take straight to their game at home and use. And the reality right now is that, now the streaks, yeah, I'm just going to say it, the streaks suck in Call of Duty Ghosts. They're weak, they're horrible, they're bad. And if I ever saw Riley in a competitive game, I would laugh and I would turn it off. <laughs> you can't use those streaks in competitive Call of Duty. And they're just bad. They're bad streaks. They're, they're, they're just bad. You know, they're just not good. And so, you know, it's not like you're going to use an IMS and put it on the B flag in Domination, you know, and when you're watching Envy play against Optic. It ruins the game. It slows it down. It's just, you know, and I think that... Ghost took some steps backwards. You know, they didn't build the game with competitive in mind. And you can still have a fun game with thinking about competitive. And we, Black Ops 2 proved that. Everybody that really despises competitive gaming, you know, Black Ops 2 created a game that was perfectly supportive for competitive. And it was fun for pubs. It was a fun game. You know, you had a swarm and you had uh, orbital VSAT. You had streaks that were fun to use in pubs. And then you also had streaks that were fun to use in competitive. And you had league play, which was amazing. Uh, I wish more people would have played it, but it was amazing. And I think that as we try to move forward, we got to respect the growth process. We got to respect the growth process. And so don't complain so much about what MLG is doing. And I did originally, I said they're monopolizing stream views. And I still think, you know, um, it's a little crazy over there with the number of people that are on MLG.tv. But what I had to realize is that that's our outlet. The more people, the more channels, the more players that get on MLG.tv and not Twitch, the more money MLG has to support competitive gaming. Period. That's just, I mean, that's a no-brainer, you know, and as much as I want to complain about it, MLG basically right now is COD Esports, you know. MLG owns competitive Call of Duty, and some of the strides they've made with creating that YouTube channel, COD, the MLG COD channel, and taking it away and making it separate, and now they have more views than the MLG channel, you know, and so I think that uh, we're making strides in the right direction. One of the things we have to remember is that as MLG makes moves, yes, it is going to reveal what's broken. If they kept everything the same, if they never changed anything, there was no league, there was no draft, there were no trade deadlines, there was no separate championship and open bracket, 
we wouldn't even know what was broken and things would stay the same. I think MLG is taking steps in the right direction. And so, you know, and is it a sport? Yes. Call of Duty is a sport. Be Let me make sure I read this direction exactly as it is. An activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against one another for entertainment. That's the important thing. For entertainment. Competitive Call of Duty takes skill and physical exertion. And it's entertaining. And one of the things we have to remember as we consider what we're going to do with competitive Call of Duty is that the average person that purchases Call of Duty and, and, and gaming and gaming accessories is 35. The average gamer is 30. We have to consider that. The average gamer is 30 years old. They have to be entertained because they have the money to spend to watch this stuff. And the people that are going to be sponsoring players, sponsoring teams, they're in their 30s or older. You know, those are the people who are going to be pushing competitive Call of Duty forward. And, you know, kids these days, 12 to, from 12 to 17... 97% of 12 to 17 year olds, 97% play video games. So the market is there. You know, the average gamer is 30. And kids that are 12 and above, 90% of them are playing video games. So the market is there. Um, I just think we all have to kind of move together. And we got to slow down and allow MLG to make these decisions and to make mistakes, you know. And we don't have to throw rocks at them when they make mistakes. We can kind of just have a casual conversation about it and say, this is not going to work. This is a bad Bad idea blah 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 you know and so you know I um, I appreciate the direction that things are going and I do think it's possible that it's going to be a lot bigger but it may not be probable lastly because it's it's still kind of unpopular amongst mainstream America and around the globe it's just unpopular because you're shooting people, and there's blood, and it's violent, and people don't want to say it, but everybody's playing it. But nobody wants to say it, and until everybody can kind of open up and say, yes, I play Call of Duty, and I love it, and I love competitive Call of Duty, and if you want to play Call of Duty with me, let's get on the sticks. Until everybody can say that, including myself, including other people I know that are kind of like, you know, uh, th that don't talk to very many people in their life about what they do you know and when I when my mom learned about my channel she was just like this is amazing and I didn't know what to think about it but that opens up the door you know for me to talk to more people about it and as more of us talk to more people about it it will grow and some people aren't gonna like it we just have to reside with that but it will grow every single person that's on that's on YouTube that's a smaller channel or a larger channel or is young or old will tell you that in the beginning they didn't tell anybody and then when they started telling people they were shocked that even though people didn't understand that because they were making money it became well I guess it's okay <laughs> you know, it was kind of like you know and so and that's how Call of Duty is gonna grow you know and so Sledgehammer good luck um, you gotta hit a home run in order for us to continue to grow and go in the right direction but I have to honestly say I think MLG is doing the right things because they're trying they're trying, and every time we complain and yell at them and scream at them, they keep trying to do the right thing, and some of their decisions are really good, so uh, I do think it's a sport, I do think it'll grow, I do think it's possible, at this time though, it's just not probable until people can accept it and go to, you know, COD Anonymous meetings and say, my name is Anthony, and I play competitive Call of Duty, and I love it. <laughs> this is your boy Kingdom Soldier, I'll see you in the next video, peace.